Hello and good morning. My name is Alec and I am an interpreter for California State Parks. And I'm coming to you live today from Natural Bridges State Beach in Santa Cruz, California on the Central Coast. I'm thrilled to be doing this program with you today. And I'm here in our visitor center, which is currently closed and right in front of the aquarium, as you can see. Uh, so trying to set that theme, today we're gonna to be talking about creatures that live in the aquarium and also outside in our tide pool ecosystem, tide pool habitat. So we just wanted to say, first of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for staying home today. We appreciate that. Uh, we're thrilled to have you with us. And you are possibly one of 500 families that are tuning in um, to learn about your California State Parks. Um, and this is coming to you from the California State Parks Ports Home Learning Program. Ports is Parks Online Resources for Teachers and Students. So this is the first program this week of 30 programs. So there are a lot of programs that you can tune into from all over the state. Uh, so we're, we're really, really happy. Um, I'm really happy that I get to join you on our first program today. And today is MPA Monday. What's MPA? MPA stands for Marine Protected Area. Okay, marine Protected Area. There are over 120 marine protected areas throughout our great state of California. And there are several thousand world. And marine protected area is relatively straightforward. All it means is like it's like a park, okay, uh, but underwater. And Natural Bridges State Beach, where I am, also has a marine protected area. So we're going to be talking about marine protected areas, what lives in them, uh, how you can protect them. But before we begin, we're going to take three deep breaths, because I think that's the best way to begin any morning, but especially a Monday morning, beginning of the week, okay? So, <clears throat> gotta have proper posture to expand those lungs. We're gonna take three deep breaths, in through the nose, out through the mouth. You ready? All right, let's get to it. First inhale, exhale. Second breath, inhale, exhale. But I went in through the mouth that time. <laughs> and third breath, inhale through the nose. I'll get it right this time. Exhale through the mouth. That felt good, didn't it? And it feels even better knowing that two out of three of those breaths were brought to you by the ocean. That's right. The ocean provides us the air to breathe, as well as many other benefits. Food regulates the temperature, and it helps with climate change. The ocean is huge for us. And two out of those three breaths that you just took were from the ocean. Did you know that? Pretty amazing. All right, so once again, my name is Alec. I work for Natural Bridges State Beach. It's a California state park coming from Santa Cruz. And you're here for a story, right? Okay. But before we begin our story, I'm about to share it with you. I need you to run an errand for me, okay? And I'm gonna give you 20 seconds, not yet, when I say go, okay? In those 20 seconds, I need you to grab for me one or two pieces of paper, okay? A pen or a pencil, and optional, third one is optional, something to color with. Crayons, colored pencils, markers, pastels, do whatever you feel, okay? So remember, paper. Pen, pen or pencil, and things to color with. Okay, 20 seconds on the clock. Ready, set. Go get it and bring it back here. Ready, set, go. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 seconds, people. 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, 
all right, do you have the things? Do you have your pieces of paper? Do you have your pen or pencil? Do you have your things to color with? All right, you need those three things. And the reason you need those three things is today, we're gonna to be talking about the secrets of the seashore, okay? And you're going to be, I'm gonna ask you to draw, all right, an, uh, a tide pool, and we'll talk more about a tide pool, and all the animals that live inside it, okay? And so at the end, you'll have a full tide pool full of all the creatures. Now, I'm gonna leave it as a personal challenge to you, how many things you want to draw or color. Okay, so if you, if you wanna do, there's gonna be about 14 of these. If you wanna do all 14, yes, I appreciate you. If you wanna do 10, that's awesome, I appreciate you too. If you wanna do five or six, great. And if you wanna do one or two, up to you. You're here at your leisure. I just appreciate that you're here, okay? So uh, this book is called Secrets of the Seashore, and it is written by Karen Brown and Alyssa Astin. So special thing about this book, it's called a shine a light book, which means I got my phone here and I'm gonna be shining a light behind the pages, okay? I'm gonna be shining a light behind the pages and you're gonna see all the secret creatures that are living in here. So someone just asked, what are we drawing? Excellent question. We are gonna be drawing the creatures that live inside the tide pool. So I'm gonna be talking about each one. While I'm talking about each one, while we're reading about it, you're going to be drawing it, coloring it, however you want. All right. So Secrets of the Seashore. Great way to kick off our NPA morning. All right. A tide pool is bustling with life. If you look closely between the rocks, Beneath fronds of seaweed and on the sandy bay, you will see the animals living there. A tide pool is a hollow on the seashore. Can you see what happens when the tide comes in? All right, so this is where the magic happens. Oh. <gasps> Can you see the creatures that live inside? Pretty cool, right? <laughs> Special effects in books, impressive. So this is a tide pool and it's exactly what it looks like. Okay, you have a pool, all right, right on the shore so there's the ocean and then this is the shore and this is a pool that's formed when the tide comes in so when the waves start rolling in and then it fills up and then the waves go out and then there's still some water left so creatures can still live here it's like a mini ocean all right so go ahead and draw your tide pool go ahead and draw your tide pool and we're going to move on to the next one all right Whoosh, the seawater flows in with the tide and fills the tide. Creatures that live in seawater have waited for the tide pool to fill. What's hiding in these shells? Here we go, what we got this time. What do you think that is? Like some kind of shelled creature, perhaps. Gone, and it's back again. <laughs> what are these? Bubble, bubble. Mussels. These are mussels. Mussels keep their blue shells tightly shut while the tide is out. Now they open their shells and begin to feed. All right, so mussels. Our friends, the mussels, they feed kind of like through a straw. They're called filter feeders, right? They have this thing called a siphon 
and they suck in seawater and they're looking for tiny microscopic creatures they can filter and eat and then they then they blow out the seawater it's like a straw don't worry it's reusable <laughs> okay so these are muscles so if you want to draw your muscles here's one last look at them okay we're gonna be moving on creatures cling to the rocks around the pool who could live in shells like these ready we're gonna shine a light Wow, what do you think those are? Barnacles. Barnacles come to life in the water. They reach out their feathery legs to wave tiny pieces of food into their mouth. All right, so these are our friends, the barnacles. There are those feathery legs and they're shoveling food into their mouth with those feathery legs. All right, so if you wanna draw your barnacles, go ahead and do that. We're gonna move on to the next one. All right, what's next? Other creatures are waking up too. What are these jewel-like animals? Well, let's shine a light, let's figure it out. <gasps> wow, I didn't even see those things gone and they're back. They look like almost tentacles. The sea anemones, sea anemones are searching for food with their long wriggly tentacles. They eat small fish in the tree. So these are our sea anemones. Have you all ever seen the movie Finding Nemo? It's a Disney Pixar classic. All right, our friend Nemo lives inside the anemones okay that's nemo's home so sometimes these anemones are habitats their homes for other creatures now as we're talking about anemones actually have electric stinging tentacles that's how they catch their food all right imagine having electric stinging tentacles just to get your food Zap. pretty cool and they also ward off their predators as well, things that are trying to eat them. They'll zap them too, pretty sweet. And a lot of people don't even know they're alive. A lot of people just think they might be a flower in the sea, which they have been called, but they're indeed alive. Here's one last look at our sea anemones. Nice, all right. Dark nooks under rocks make perfect hiding places. Can you see? who's resting here, it's kind of peeking out. I think I know what it is, but better shine a light. Let's figure this out. Huh? Oh, oh, that's what it is. A crab holds its pinchers up ready to grab a bite to eat. There's our crab friend. And crabs are pretty cool animals because they have pinchers. They have tools built in to what we think of as hands, right? So they, they can grab things and use them as tools. Pretty sweet. So if you wanna draw your crab in your tide pool, okay. Got the pinchers, got the legs, got the body. <laughs> All right. The crab is on the move, but there's another hunter nearby. By the way, crabs eat pretty much anything, dead or alive. When you're hungry, so there's another creature. Looks like, what is that? What is that? Who could that belong to? Oh, oh. Do you recognize what that is?
if any of you have ever seen SpongeBob SquarePants, this is our friend Patrick. Sea star, or starfish as they're sometimes called, uses tube-like suckers on its underside to hold onto the rock. That's our sea star. And sea stars use brute strength. They're really, really strong. All right, and they rip open things with shells like mussels, for instance. And then they use their stomach which is on their underside, so that's their stomach. And their stomach actually comes out, envelops the prey, and then sucks back into the sea star's body. Pretty savage, right? Crazy. So that's our sea star. One last look. All right. Another animal with suckers is resting in the tide pool. Can you count its eight arms? What do we got here? I don't even see anything. Oh, that's what it is. Looks like an octopus. That's right. An octopus has eight long arms with suckers on the underside. It crawls slowly under the rocks. So octopuses have suckers. And they use it to grab onto things like their food. <laughs> and octopuses are also some of the most intelligent creatures in the world. Um, they have been found many times if they're in aquariums to escape they're aquariums, they're escape artists. They're also wonderful at camouflage. Okay, so on a sandy bottom of the ocean, they'll blend in really well. Or some rocks, they'll blend in really well. Or even if a school of fish is swimming by, they'll blend in with the school of fish. Very devious, very smart. There is an animal hiding in the sand. Only its eyes can be seen. What do you think it is? Looks like those are the eyes. Any guesses? Any guesses? What do we think? All right. Oh, oh, nice. It's just speaking of camouflage, that blended in so well. All right. A small fish lives in the tide pool. It hides under rocks, in seaweed, and in the sand. So there's our fishy. And we have a small fishy in our tide pools called a sculpin. And sculpins, okay, are really small. They're probably about that big, maybe an inch or two. And when a big wave comes in, they get swept out of the tide pool. They can find themselves really far away. All right, and they can actually find their way back from 300, they've been proven from 330 feet, okay? So that's like you and I getting uh, taken from our homes and placed in a random spot three miles away, just somewhere completely random. It could be someone's backyard, it could be in the woods, it can be in a building, and you're just like, oh, yeah, I know my way home. And then you just walk back those three miles quite easily. So they have like a homing beacon built into their body. They know where their original home tide pool is. All from a little fish that big. Impressive. All right. Another tide pool creature lives in this large shell. What do you think this large shell could be? Let's see. It looks like a snail to me, right? Oh, trick question. 
it's not a snail. It's something living inside the snail shell. Surprise! A hermit crab has made his home in the empty shell. There's our hermit crab. The hermit crab is nature's most resourceful creature. Okay. The motto for hermit crabs is whatever it takes. Why do I say that? Because hermit crabs, I said crabs will eat anything. Hermit crabs will eat anything. Hermit crabs have been spotted to eat poop. True story. They eat poop. Yeah, they're the bottom feeders, our hermit crab friends. So there's your last chance to draw the hermit crab. It's got shell. <laughs> it's got its legs, antenna, little eyes. All right. Here's our next creature. This whelk, call this thing a whelk, whelk is sharing its part of the tide pool with small swimming creatures. Can you see them? Let's see, let's turn on a light. I can't see anything. Oh, where did they come from? What do you think those are? I'll give you a hint. People have cocktail parties with them. <laughs> and it is the most commonly eaten seafood in the United States. All right. It's orange when it's cooked. What do we got? Shrimp. That's right. Good guesses. Shrimp move backward by quickly flicking their tails. Their see-through bodies are much easier to find when they move. They're also the masters of camouflage. Okay. And there are a lot of kinds of shrimp. All right. But I want to tell you a, a quick side story about my friend, the mantis shrimp. Have you ever seen the mantis shrimp before? Do you know about the mantis shrimp? It is a real creature. This is not fictional, okay? And it's one of the most colorful creatures in the world. Uh, and one of the reasons the mantis shrimp is one of the most colorful creatures in the world is because, so we see a range of colors. You can think of when you see a rainbow, that's like our sort of range of colors we're able to see, okay? So this little guy, the mantis shrimp can see five times the amount of colors, five times the number of colors that we can see. Okay, so we see you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, sort of everything in between there, but the mantis shrimp can see five times the amount of colors, okay? So the mantis shrimp lives in one colorful, trippy world. The other thing about the mantis shrimp is, uh, Although it looks quite harmless, and it is very small, it packs a punch, okay? And uh, it actually punches with its, its, front, uh, its front claws faster than a bullet leaves a gun, okay? That's how fast that it shoots its pinchers, all right? Something pretty crazy, it's like a superhero move, if it punches once, it actually counts as two punches because it moves so fast that first, first the pincher lands, and then the air bubble behind the pincher is going so fast that the air bubble lands and acts as a second fist. So for every one punch, the mana shrimp is delivering two punches. All right. So if, if humans, if we could... Uh, if we were as powerful as the mantis shrimp, all right, then, and we could just actually, if we were 10% as powerful, if we were one-tenth as powerful as the mantis shrimp, then we could throw a baseball into outer space. So imagine if the mantis shrimp was a much bigger creature. It would probably be hunting us down. <laughs> but fortunately, the mantis shrimp remains 
this big. So we're good. So here's one last look at the mantis shrimp. I encourage you to look up the mantis shrimp sometime. They're quite fascinating. Okay, we gotta see what else is in these tide pools. Something is waving in the water. Which plants live in the sea? Oh, there are plants in the sea? What? Yep. Slick and slimy seaweed anchors itself to rocks and grows in the sun. One very common seaweed that you see here on the central coast is something called giant kelp. All right, giant kelp forests exist all over the central coast. And uh, these giant kelp can grow um, up to 200 feet high. And get this, each day can grow up to two feet. Two feet. All right. So I'm about six feet. Some of you are probably taller. Some of you are probably shorter. If you're four feet tall, the giant kelp can outgrow you in two days. How's that feel? Amazing. All right. What is slithering along the seaweed? Do you see anything? Okay, I see. I can see the shell there. Let's see what else? Oh. Okay. Okay. What we got? Oh, we already encountered this. Do you remember what it's called? It's called a whelk. A whelk is looking for other shellfish. It can drill a hole, drill a hole through a shell to eat the creature inside. So the whelk literally has a drill built in. All right. This is a screwdriver, I know, but it has the same basic, uh, same basic properties. All right, so it actually drills through. And what body part does it use to drill through? It uses its tongue. It uses its tongue to drill through, okay? It's crazy. Um, so it, it, it eats other shellfish, sometimes even other whelks if it's very hungry. So whelks are cannibalistic, and also so are crabs, actually. There's quite a few things that are cannibalistic. But yes, it uses its tongue to drill through other whelks and other shellfish to eat them. Oh, it's everyone's favorite sea creature. What's that? <laughs> That's an otter. That's right. A sleek sea otter has spotted something. Can you see what she wants for dinner? Let's see, what does the sea otter want? What does the sea otter want? Oh, what's that? It's kind of hard to see. Something spiky. Oh, here's another one. Something spiky. What's spiky? What do sea otters eat that's spiky? I'll give you a hint. They're oftentimes purple. That's right, they're sea urchins. Urchins. Most animals stay away from those nasty spikes, but a sea urchin is a tasty meal for the sea otter. There's our sea urchin. And sometimes you can see what a, when you're on the beach, what a sea urchin looks like without all those terrifying, intimidating spikes. It's quite harmless. This is a sea urchin shell. It's quite beautiful. No more spikes on this guy. And one fun fact about our friend the otter is the otter will go down to the bottom of the ocean. It'll pick up these urchins. All right. And 
the otter has really like flexible skin. So it'll create, like when I was a kid, I was really hungry and I was watching TV and I was super lazy. I'd pour a bunch of like chips or crackers uh, into my, I'd make like a, I make like a bucket with my shirt. So I'd like store them all here. I take them back to the couch, like the, the lazy kid that I was. And then I would eat from it. The otter does the same thing. The otter has super stretchy skin. So it makes like a, a bag with its, with its skin, its pelt. And then it puts all the urchins in, comes back to the surface, floats. And the otter has a pet rock. The otter has a pet rock. It takes the pet rock and it breaks open <laughs> the, the sea urchins and then eats the meat inside and throws the sea urchin shells. So we do need otters because there are a lot of sea urchins out there. And so otters are what we call a keystone species. They are essential to the ocean. We need otters. But otters are also smart creatures. All right. Moving on. We got some flying creatures. Which orange beaked bird lives on the seashore? What do you think that is? Hmm? Let's get a closer look, shall we? Oh, well, this bird does have a body. Do you know what it is now? This guy we call an oyster catcher. An oyster catcher is calling out to other birds. Squawk. Here's one last look at the oyster catcher. Contrary to its name, the oyster catcher really doesn't eat or catch a lot of oysters, but it does eat other shellfish, like mussels and clams, for instance. There's our oyster catcher. And they have that super orange beak and the orange feet. That's a good way to find them. All right, can you see what the oyster catcher has found in the sand? Well, let's see, I'll give you one last look, see if you can find it. What's it looking for? Let's shine a light. All right, so remember what I talked about. What does the oyster catcher eat? Oh, there are a bunch of these. These are clams, clammy clams. And oyster catcher, one way that it eats is it'll pick up, pick up something with a shell and with his beak and then bash it down on a rock like a hammer. <laughs> it beats it down like a hammer, just uses brute force and tenacity and aggression. That's the oyster catcher. All right, so moving on to clams. It's a clam. The oyster catcher's long beak is perfect for finding buried food. That's what they use that for. And they'll pick up the clam and they'll bash it like a hammer. <laughs> there you go. There's our clams. Slowly, the tide retreats, and with it, much of the water in the tide pool. Its animals and plants are resting again, waiting for the next tide to come in. There's our tide pool. There's all the creatures that live in the tide pool. And the end of our story has arrived. But You've been drawing and or coloring. I know it's probably an unfinished product because it was quite rushed, but I want to see your, uh, your drawings and your illustrations. So hold it up to the camera for me. Let's see those drawings. Put them up, put them up, put them up, put them up. Just show me what you got. Oh, nice work. Great job. Oh, those are so cool. All right, now show the person next to you. Show the person next to you. Oh, wow. That looks really good. You draw really well. You're a good artist. All right, 
So thank you so much for joining us today to read Secrets of the Seashore and for finding out all about our tide pools. Now there are tide pools here at Natural Bridges State Beach. There are tide pools in other places as well. So I encourage you, if you're ever out here at Natural Bridges or other parks, please, please go look at the tide pools. Go explore. It's really, really fun. And the tide pools here are marine protected area, which means that it's in pristine condition. It's in fantastic condition. And it'll be that way for hundreds of years, we hope, as long as people continue to go out there and respect the tide pools, they don't touch and they don't take. And it's a wonderful place. So thank you for joining me. My name is Alec and I'm a state park interpreter for Natural Bridges State Beach. We're so glad that you joined us today. And don't forget our ports program. You can find 29 other programs that are happening rest of this week and the rest of today for NPA Monday at ports slash ca dot us. Go to ports slash ca dot us for more programs this week. So again, thank you for joining us from the comfort of your home. We're really happy that you decide to stay home if you can. Um, and we're, we're really looking forward to uh, hosting you at Natural Bridges State Beach uh, at the Visitor Center as soon as we open yet again. So have a great week, folks, and visit your local marine protected area sometime. Take care. Bye.